Hi everyone, Scott here. In this video, I will be walking through Activity 6-1, titled Installing Active Directory Domain Services. This is from the MCSA Guide to Installing and Configuring Microsoft Windows Server 2012 R2. In my edition of the book, this activity begins on page 220. As the title suggests, the entire purpose of this activity is installing and configuring Active Directory Domain Services in Windows. So to begin, you'll need a Windows up Server Operating System. I'm running 2012 R2, and we're going to set this up as a domain controller, providing Active Directory domain services. Um, so to begin, in your server dashboard, you want to select Add Roles and Features. Hit Next. Um, we're selecting a role-based installation on the local server. We're going to select Active Directory Domain Services. It'll notify us of the additional features that are needed. So we'll go ahead and tell it to add those. I'm going to have it include the management tools. Select Next. It should have already checkmarked the necessary features by default. Um, one of the primary ones we're going to take a look at in future videos is Group Policy Management. So we'll select Next with the default features. Next again, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to restart automatically if it needs. And we begin the installation. And so this is kind of the easy part, getting everything installed. Um, once it's done that, then we need to promote this server as a domain controller and configure our domain controller. So this process, installing the role and features, should only take a couple of minutes. And then we'll get into the real meat of the activity. Just for the sake of keeping this video short, I'm going to pause the recording and we'll come back once the role and feature installation is complete. Alright, so that took about two minutes. Um, so the role and features have been installed. We can close the wizard here. And in our server manager, we're going to want to click on our little notification flag. And we see that we need to promote this server to a domain controller. So we're going to do that next. For this, we're going to select Add a New Forest and we'll give it a root domain name. Um, this name is going to vary depending on the company or business that you're setting this domain up for. Um, since this is just a test environment, and I'm just going to call it 410 server 2012.local. This follows the instructions from the MCSA guide. We're going to hit next. We want to make sure, in this case, that our function level is at least 2012 R2. Um, if you have a Windows 2008 server, it will still function as a domain controller. Um, but if you set this, your primary or your first domain controller, as a lower level, you can't bring it up to a higher level. Um, so you want to generally set it at the highest possible. Um, we want to, to have... <coughs> DNS capabilities, and we want to give it a DSRM password. Then we'll hit next. I think in the book it tells you to check mark this box. Um, since this is the first domain controller, I don't think it'll allow us to do that because it can't find the parent zone because the parent zone doesn't actually exist yet. So we'll move on. The NetBIOS domain name is usually for much older computers. Um, Windows 7, 8, and 10 will be using the domain name rather than the NetBIOS name. Um, just for simplicity's sake, we'll let it match as it does by default. The 
the NetBIOS name might also be used for some Apple computers with the Mac iOS. I'm not too familiar with managing the Apple side of things with Windows, so I can't really give any tips or advice on that. Um, for this section, specifying the location of the database, log files, and sysvol, I think generally you would want these on a separate volume rather than right where your operating system is installed. I don't have a separate volume set up to store this database, so I'm going to leave it by default as the C drive. Um, but in a real environment, you may want to set these up on a separate volume. Uh, the review options, this will just go through and give a quick overview of everything that you're configuring there. Um, in the view script, it'll give you the PowerShell script. You can save this as a PS1. And call it whatever you'd like, say Active Directory Domain Services. 410 server 2012.ps1 and that would create a PowerShell script that you could run to go through that wizard configuration that we just walked through. The script, if you run it, would go through all the same steps without needing the wizard. So I'm not going to bother saving it. We'll just finish with the wizard. <coughs> Um, one thing to note there is that by clicking install, the server will automatically reboot once it's been promoted. And we did get a couple little warnings. Um, one is about security settings, the other is about DNS. Um, this we saw earlier with the DNS infrastructure, since this is the first domain controller, there's no parent zone for it to check in with. So, as it mentions there, no action is required because it's the first domain controller for this domain. So we're going to go ahead and move on. And once this is all completed, it will automatically reboot, and we'll come back in and, and log in onto the domain rather than onto the local machine. So for the moment, I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording. We'll come back once the machine has started to reboot, and we'll take a look at logging in as a domain user rather than the local administrator. All right, so the configuration completed. Here's the notification that it's about to reboot. And it should only take about 30 seconds at most before it begins that restart process. Um, I was looking at the instructions from the book, and they say to log in as the administrator, and they put a note you're now logging on to the server as, well, you're logging into the domain. Um, we're going to take a look at that when we get to our login screen here. Logging in on Windows 7 and newer, I guess, 7, 8, 8.1, 10, um, server 2012 or newer, maybe even server 2008. Um, usually specify the domain backslash username. Um, with Windows XP, maybe Vista, I'm not positive about Vista, but XP and older, um, you would actually have a separate box where you'd put the domain name. So you'd have a username, a domain name, and a password rather than just two boxes.
And so with the newer operating systems where you only have two boxes, this ties in to whether you're logging in as the local administrator or the domain administrator. Once we get to our login options here, it very slowly powers back on and boots up the operating system. There we go. If you're running this on a physical server, you probably have a little more hardware performance than I have running this as a virtual, so your wait times probably won't be quite as bad. But since I'm running this on a virtual, I just kind of have to wait for it. Alright, now that it is up, we will go ahead and get logged in. Um, and so you see here, this is actually... Uh, this looks like it is logging in as the domain administrator. And you can tell the difference. Um, here we have the domain name. If we were logging in as the local administrator, it would show us the computer name or the server name, which looks like it's not going to do here. Um, but you'll notice that especially on your end-user computers, um, I'm running Windows 7. Um, so to log in to, as the local administrator, you'd use this format with dot backslash indicating log on to the local machine rather than the domain. Um, with the server, it'll just log directly in as the domain administrator now instead of the local. So we'll get logged into it. And then we'll very quickly take a look and see that Active Directory was installed. So there we see it. Um, the main program you'll be using is Users and Computers. So I would recommend that you pin that to your taskbar. And that way it's down here. As soon as you log into it, you know, you're one click away from getting your management tools up. And so there's our domain and our Users and Computers um, will fall into our organizational units under here. Um, how you build this and organize it, again, will kind of depend on the business or the company you're setting it up for. 
um, and I'll look into getting into some of the more advanced things as we progress through the videos. Um, as always, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them for me below, and I will try to reply in a timely fashion.